And now the FAU Wind Ensemble will begin the processional performance. the distinguished delegates representing colleges and universities of the United States. members of the esteemed faculty of Florida Atlantic University. Bearing the mace of Florida Atlantic University, the University Marshal and Board of Trustees member, Dr. Timothy Lentz. Members of the Platform Party.
participants in today's installation ceremony. President of FAU Student Government and Trustee, Mr. Aiden Mayer. Chair of the FAU Foundation, Mr. Michael Kaufman. President of Broward College, Mr. J. David Armstrong. Mayor of the City of Boca Raton, Ms. Susan Welchel. Member of the Florida Board of Governors, Mr. Norman Tripp. Trustee Sherry Plymel. Chair of the FAU Board of Trustees, Nancy Blosser. Interim Provost, Dr. Diane Alperin. Vice President for Research and Dean of the Graduate School at the University of Akron, Dr. George Newcomb. President Emeritus of Cleveland State University, Dr. Michael Schwartz. Chancellor of the State University System, Mr. Frank Brogan. State Representative, Mr. Adam Hasner. President of Florida International University, Dr. Mark Rosenberg. Chancellor of Nova Southeastern University, Mr. Ray Ferraro. Chair of the FAU National Alumni Association's Board of Directors, Ms. Romaine Berry. Florida Atlantic University's Board of Trustees, Trustee Anthony Barber. Trustee William Bryant. Trustee Jeffrey Feingold. Trustee Rajendra Gupta. Trustee Robert Rubin. Trustee Robert Stilley. Trustee Thomas Workman. Now the Florida Atlantic University's deans. Dean of the Christine E. Lynn College of Nursing, Dr. Ann Boykin. Dean of the College of Education, Dr. Valerie Brister. Dean of the Harriet L. Wilkes Honors College, Dr. Jeffrey Buller. Dean of the College for Design and Social Inquiry, Dr. Rosalind Carter. Dean of the Charles E. Schmidt College of Medicine, Dr. Michael Friedland. Associate Dean of the College of Business, Dr. Paul Hart. Dean of the Dorothy F. Schmidt College of Arts and Letters, Dr. Manjunath Pendiker. Dean of the Charles E. Schmidt College of Science, Dr. Gary Perry. Dean of Undergraduate Studies, Dr. Edward Pratt. Dean of the Graduate College, Dr. Barry Rawson. Dean of the College of Engineering and Computer Science, Dr. Carl Stevens. And Associate Dean of Libraries, Ms. Rita Pellin.
Distinguished guests, the sixth president of Florida Atlantic University, Dr. Mary Jane Saunders. Will everyone please stand and join in the singing of our national anthem performed by the FAU Wind Ensemble and the FAU Chamber Singers. Be seated. The Interim Provost of Florida Atlantic University, Dr. Diane Alperin. Thank you. On behalf of everyone at Florida Atlantic University, I welcome you to this historic occasion. The inauguration of a university president provides an opportunity to celebrate the rich tradition of intellectual endeavor that goes back centuries. We are all very fortunate to be here today as we welcome a new leader who is committed to the success of each student, faculty member, and support staff at FAU. Today, we welcome the delegates from other colleges and universities, and we greet the members of the Florida Atlantic University faculty. We offer a special welcome to the family of Dr. Mary Jane Saunders and a warm greeting to her husband, Dr. George Newcomb. We are also honored to host this distinguished platform party whose members have come together today to bring greetings from the groups they represent as Florida Atlantic University moves forward under the leadership of a new president. I offer a special welcome to the representatives of the Florida Board of Governors, the Florida Atlantic University Board of Trustees, the deans of the university's colleges, our student body, our faculty, our alumni, our foundation, our partner state colleges, the state universities, the private universities, the Florida legislature, and the community at large. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce Trustee Sherry Plymail, Charter Member and Past Chair of the Florida Atlantic University Board of Trustees and Chair of the Inauguration Committee. She will offer her thoughts on the significance of today's activities.
Thank you, Dr. Alperin. And greetings to all of you who have taken time out of your busy schedules to be with us today as we stand on the cusp of Florida Atlantic University's second 50 years. We are here to mark the beginning of a new era at Florida Atlantic University. Presidential inaugurations are rare and special occasions at most universities. This is only our sixth. A significant university ritual, this inauguration rep represents the honor of tradition and leadership, and the events surrounding it highlight the strengths and diversity of FAU. Preparing for this day has provided those of us who planned it with a fascinating glimpse into the history of occasions such as this and an understanding of the importance of tradition in academic life. In the classical world, the academy stood apart from the affairs of daily life as its members dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge and the integration of their discoveries into the world's existing knowledge base. Their special status was indicated by the clothing they wore and the rituals they created to impart a sense of timeless value to their work. In this auditorium today, centuries after the creation of these customs, we are in their presence. The academic gowns, hoods, and hats worn by the delegates, faculty, and platform party trace their origin to the great universities of medieval Europe and the inaugural ceremony has a similarly long history. Like most rituals, it's intended to give us a moment to stop and think about where we've been and where we're going. Since an inauguration marks a transfer of authority, it incorporates the use of symbols representing the high responsibility that comes with the acceptance of high office. Universities all over the world use these symbols that are part of the ceremony, such as the mace and the president's medallion. At a moment such as this, we gain a heightened sense of our place in the grand sweep of history and renewed appreciation for the, the accomplishments of those who came before us. The ancient pageantry and symbolic richness of this ceremony vividly demonstrate the debt we owe many past generations of scholars and thinkers and the responsibility we bear to carry the torch of learning forward for the benefit of our own and future generations. The values we celebrate here today are truly the hope of the world and we are privileged to be serving this great mission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Plymail. And now I am pleased to welcome to the podium Dr. Timothy Lenz, who is President of the Faculty Senate and a member of the FAU Board of Trustees. Dr. Lenz is the Chair of Political Science Department in the Dorothy F. Schmidt College of Arts and Letters. He has been a part of FAU for more than 25 years. He earned his PhD in Political Science from the University of Minnesota and teaches and researches in the public law and American government subfields. Today, Dr. Lenz speaks on behalf of his colleagues on the faculty as he offers their greetings to President Saunders. Thank you. The inauguration of a president provides an opportunity for the entire university community to take stock of its achievements and to join the new president in creating a vision for the university's future and a plan to achieve it. President Saunders has used her inauguration to showcase the achievements and contributions of FAU's dedicated faculty and students. Her arrival at FAU heralds a new era in the university's leadership, an era that will be distinguished for its focus on the contributions of all those who make this university a center of academic success. FAU is approaching its fifth decade of educating bright minds. It is appropriate for faculty to mark this occasion by rededicating ourselves, by rededicating themselves to the university's mission. That mission includes fostering academic and personal development as well as lifelong learning through excellent and innovative teaching, 
conducting research and creative activities, developing scientific and cultural alliances, and public engagement, all in an environment that fosters inclusiveness. On behalf of the faculty, I am privileged to extend to you Dr. Saunders, professor in the Charles E. Schmidt College of Science, Science and President, a warm welcome to Florida Atlantic University. We look forward to working with you to make FAU an even greater university. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lenz. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce Aidan Mayer, our student government president and member of our board of trustees. Mr. Mayer is providing enthusiastic leadership for FAU's 28,000 students, and his strong voice and dedication speaks effectively on their behalf on many important issues. Today, he brings the greetings of the student body to FAU's new president. Thank you so much, Provost Alpern. <clears throat> Fumbling around with my pen and everything up here. It's a great honor today to bring greetings on behalf of the student body of Florida Atlantic University to our sixth president, Mary Jane Saunders. It's not often that a student has the opportunity to experience the transition of leadership within their university. The traditions that date back centuries are themselves part of a complex educational ritual from which we can all learn about our past and look towards our future. Each day we are fortunate enough to learn something from our professors, our mentors, and each other. Today we learn from each of you the importance of academia and of, from today's festivities. Not many people know this, but when I first applied to Florida Atlantic University, I didn't get in. I had to appeal my admission status. I wasn't that great of a student in high school, we can say. But I said in my letter, I said, if you let me into your, your great institution, I promise I will give back and I will put forth efforts into the community, into the university, and that I have, and that many students have as well. And they're really, truly taking ownership and pride of Florida Atlantic University. Since I've been here, since 2007, I've seen such tremendous growth and change, and I know President Saunders is going to take us to the next level. President Saunders, your commitment to education and your scholarship challenge will continue to open doors for students like myself and future students at FAU. The students of Florida Atlantic University wish you, Dr. Saunders, every success as you strive to make FAU an even greater institution of higher learning. Your accomplishments make our accomplishments even more meaningful as the value of our FAU degree is exponentially greater with each shiny achievement. The students wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Our next speaker is Ms. Romaine Berry, an FAU alumna and chair of the Florida Atlantic University National Alumni Association. Good morning. It is a true honor to represent our almost 120,000 Florida Atlantic University alumni who live in your neighborhoods, in your towns, in your cities, in your states, and in your countries. We are truly an international student body. We are a group that is very proud of our school colors, our name, and our mascot. We are part of an intricate family that supports the accomplishments of everyone that receives a degree from Florida Atlantic University. And today, this extended family is proud to welcome President Saunders to the helm as our new leader of this institution, which we hold so close to our hearts. Dr. Saunders, we are confident that your commitment to higher education, which is reflected by your more than 25 years of teaching and leadership at universities throughout the United States, will benefit the students of FAU in ways that we can hardly imagine. On behalf of the alumni of Florida Atlantic Univers University, I wish you every success and ask you to count on each member of our alumni body to assist you as you strive to move FAU forward to even greater uh, senses of excellence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Berry. Now please welcome Mr. Michael Kaufman who brings greetings from the FAU Foundation Board.
Good morning. Um, it is my privilege um, to welcome you all and our new president, Dr. M.J. Saunders, to Florida Atlantic University on behalf of the entire FAU Foundation Board. Many of you know that, that the uh, members of our Foundation Board um, are volunteer members. Uh, we're a group who are focused on uh, uh, finding progressive ways to provide funding to the university's programs, uh, to our scholars, to our faculty, and uh, with the end result of uh, enhancing uh, the, uh, and continuing the educational experience for our students. Um, we do this to provide the opportunity to make those goals and dreams come true for those students. Under your leadership, Dr. Saunders, uh, we look forward to ushering in a new era of uh, full collaboration, good, true collaboration with our Board of Trustees uh, and our FAU National Alumni Board to work together in building momentum and, and, uh, and really hitting our goals of raising funds to support our programs. We're committed to making Florida, Florida Atlantic University uh, the truly world-class university uh, that it such deserves to be. Uh, we look forward to working with you, Dr. Saunders, um, under your leadership, your commitment to student scholarships, and the establishment of very generous gift by Dr. Saunders on her way into the university of the President's Scholarship Challenges and Act of Generosity uh, that will ensure that FAU's best and brightest students do well here uh, and are prepared to do well uh, after they graduate and hopefully return uh, as a dedicate, dedicated alum. We wish you every success today, um, and uh, we look forward to many years uh, of a wonderful tenure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. It is now my privilege to introduce Mr. Ray Ferraro, Jr., Chancellor of Nova Southeastern University. Chancellor Ferraro will speak on behalf of Florida's private universities and colleges. Good morning. I bring you welcome and congratulations on behalf of the 28 independent colleges and universities of Florida. As Chancellor of Nova Southeastern University, I can attest to the value of and the need for both public and private universities in meeting the educational needs of an ever-changing and complex workforce. Institutions such as ours play a vital role in offering options for every learner and who desires to better themselves for the future. One of the strongest values in our culture is a sense of competition. That competition creates the most impressive results. But with that, students from early childhood, education, through graduate school also learn the essential worth of cooperation in finding solutions. In this sense, I look forward to the objectives Dr. Saunders and her team will strive toward as they move FAU into the future. It is with a strong sense of camaraderie that I extend my warmest wishes to Dr. Saunders. May she and FAU enjoy continued success today, tomorrow, and into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chancellor Ferraro. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. J. David Armstrong, President of Broward College, who in 2007 was selected to lead that institution. Prior to this position, President Armstrong was the Chancellor of the Florida College System. Today, he brings greetings from FAU's partner state colleges in Broward, Palm Beach, and Indian River counties, as well as from other state colleges and community colleges.
Good morning. On behalf of Florida's 28 state colleges and community colleges, I offer you congratulations on your new role, and I welcome you back to Florida. Together with Palm Beach State College, represented today by their president, Mr. Dennis Gallen, Dr. Dennis Gallen here in the audience, and Indian River State College, Dr. Ed Massey, Broward College has enjoyed a mutually successful relationship with FAU for many years. And there's no doubt that this relationship will continue under your leadership. In your short tenure at FAU, you have already shown that you understand and appreciate the special relationship the state colleges enjoy with their partner universities and how important this relationship is to the students in the South Florida community. As FAU moves forward toward an even greater level of scholarship and academic rigor, so do your partner state colleges, and we look forward to working in partnership with you to offer South Floridians only the best in higher education opportunities. We wish you every success in your presidency. Thank you. Thank you, President Armstrong. Now please welcome Dr. Mark Rosenberg, President of Florida International University. President Ro you want an extra clap here. <laughs> <laughs> President Rosenberg has spent nearly 30 years at FIU and in 2005 left the post of provost to become chancellor of the state university system. In 2009, President Rosenberg returned to FIU as its president. President Rosenberg brings greetings on behalf of Florida's 11 public universities. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Provost. I have to brag, Madam Provost was one of my first, our first PhD recipients when I was her dean. So it's great to see someone doing well. In my role as president of FIU, I offer greetings on behalf of my colleagues of Florida's public universities. I've had the privilege of being involved, as the provost has mentioned, in higher education in this state for over 30 years. And I must tell you that I've never been more optimistic for the future uh, of our state and our public universities than today. Excellence is being achieved every day in our public institutions uh, in this state. And there's no better example of that than your FAU which for nearly 50 years has found a way to provide high quality instruction, cutting edge research, and critical engagement so that our community and our state could improve. Through its extensive service region, stretching across nearly 150 miles from the upper parts of our Treasure Coast to its base in Palm Beach County, to its second largest campus in Davie, the FAU approach has been to offer high quality educational options in many places at many times, and this is a model for serving the needs of the very diverse constituencies that are, who are privileged to inhabit our state. I want to salute FAU on its success. And I also want to tell you that I'm very pleased to have Dr. Sanders as a colleague and to see her as your sixth president. She brings a strong academic background. She listens well. She has a sense of humor. She finds a way to build win-win partnerships, which are critical if we're to be successful in providing the service and the value that our state needs in the 21st century. So I, too, want to offer, on behalf of my colleagues, my congratulations and salute your new president, Dr. Mary Jane Sanders. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Rosenberg. Now please welcome the Honorable Susan Welchel, Mayor of the City of Boca Raton. Mayor Welchel began her tenure of public service in 1995 when elected to the City Council. Today she brings greetings from FAU's community at large. Good morning. Is this not a grand and happy day. This is, um, I, get, I get to do so many wonderful things uh, in this community as mayor, but I have to tell you this rates right up there as one of the most important things in my 16 year career 
that I have been able to do because nothing is more important to a community than its educational systems. So thank you for allowing me to be here today. And I am here with my colleague, Constance Scott, and we bring you greetings, of course, from the city. Many, many eyes, many more eyes than beyond what is here today are looking at this day and as we welcome in the sixth president of Florida Atlantic University, Dr. Mary Jane Saunders. Ever since the establishment of FAU on the Boca campus in 1964, the university campus has been playing a major role in the reputation, the character, and the development of the city of Boca Raton. FS, FAU's role as part of Boca Raton over the last 46 years has been a tremendous source of pride for the city and the university. This shared community of learners, teachers, practitioners have provided a stronger and more valuable future for FAU, Boca Raton, South Florida, the nation, and yes, even the world. Many FAU graduates stay right here in this area, and our city is truly a better place for it. I know this to be true firsthand because in my family business, we have hired numerous graduates of FAU, and they have turned out to be our absolute best employees. I also know educationally what FAU is all about because I'm actually an alum. I discovered that when I was told that I didn't have to have graduated from here to be alum. I just had to take courses from here, which, <laughs> which I did. I also have a son-in-law who received his MBA from here and is so impressed that he's going back yet again for another degree right here at FAU. I foresee, as mayor of the community, a continued cooperation and exciting new developments as the university moves forward under Dr. Saunders' dynamic leadership. And on a personal note, I was very pleased after having a private meeting with the new president that I just knew that I could count on a strong community partner committed to Boca Raton's future as well as, obviously, to FAU's future. I want to wish Dr. Saunders the very best. We look forward to a very long and prosperous working relationship. And I personally want to thank her for her continued effort in reaching out and developing the necessary partnerships that are essential in order for our city to grow in the right direction and for FAU to grow in the right direction. Congratulations, Dr. Saunders. Thank you, Mayor Welchel. I would now like to welcome State Representative Adam Hasner, who will offer greetings on behalf of the Florida Legislature. Representative Hasner was first selected to the Florida House of Representatives in 2002 and is current ser currently serving his fourth term representing the people of District 87. Thank you. On behalf of the Florida Legislature, I would like to extend our congratulations to Dr. Saunders on this special day. And I am sure that I reflect the excitement of the faculty, staff, and students of Florida Atlantic University who are looking forward to the many successes that lie ahead under your leadership. In the few months that Dr. Saunders has been on the job, I have already had the privilege of working with her on the achievement of a critical milestone for the university, the establishment of an independent medical school here at the Boca Raton campus.
This, pro this program will not only make a difference in the lives of the many students who will ultimately earn their medical degrees, but it will also positively impact so many more who will benefit from expanded access to cutting edge research and improved healthcare services. At the same time, our new FAU Medical School will help to transform South Florida's economy by stimulating life sciences investment and energizing collaborative partnerships to create quality jobs and attract talent to our community. Dr. Saunders, you take the helm of FAU at a truly exciting time. The medical school will soon join the other innovative programs in science and research and technology that are leading the way to national recognition. As Florida continues on its path of economic transformation, I strongly believe that FAU is positioned to be a catalyst in creating the next generation of jobs and business opportunities for our region and for our state. Dr. Saunders, under your leadership, FAU will become more than a leading academic institution. It will become a platform to help us re-energize our state's economic engine. During my service in the legislature, I have always had a strong connection to and a deep affection for Florida Atlantic University. I am truly pleased to know that the university remains in good hands under the skilled leadership of an award-winning researcher, a dedicated professor, and now committed president. Dr. Saunders, I know that the Florida legislature wishes you every success and looks forward to working with you in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Hasner. Governor Norman Tripp, member of the Florida Board of Governors, will now offer greetings on behalf of the board. Governor Tripp is chairman emeritus of Tripp Scott Law Firm. He has served as chairman of the Board of Trustees of Florida Atlantic University. In addition, he is a member of the advisory board of the Azanga School of Business at Nova Southeastern University and a member of the board of the South Florida Board for the Annenberg Challenge Grant. Good morning. It's a privilege uh, to return. Uh, since I left the Board of Trustees and went on to the Board of Governors, two great events happened and I got to make a motion, uh, one, that we approve the independent medical school, but probably the most important one in the eyes of the student is the motion that you are now going to have a new football stadium. So it is an honor to provide greetings on behalf of the Florida Board of Governors. The members of the board have had the privilege of working with Florida's talented state university presidents since the Board of Governors was established seven years ago. In that time, we have marveled at the dedication and commitment these educational leaders have to their constituents. In the few months Dr. Saunders has been at FAU, she has already distinguished herself among her peer state university presidents, and we have already come to know her as an individual who is focused on the success of her students. This inauguration that has highlighted the academic work of the institution just further reinforces Dr. Saunders' love for higher education. We, the Board of Governors, wish you the best in your new role as president of FAU. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Tripp. I would not now like to ask the Chancellor of the State University System and immediate past president of Florida Atlantic University, Chancellor Frank Brogan, to step forward to offer greetings on behalf of the State University System. Chancellor Brogan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Alperin and Governor Tripp. Uh, gov the governor was uh, 
absolutely serious. I ran him away from a great job as a member of the Board of Trustees of Florida Atlantic University. He escaped to the Board of Governors believing he would escape me. Uh, he is now my boss once again uh, on the Board of Governors. You can run, but you cannot hide, Governor Tripp. And we thank him for his continued leadership on that very important and august body. I'd also like to take a point of personal privilege, as I've done so many times in this very auditorium, uh, to acknowledge the presence and participation of my wife, Courtney, and our five-and-a-half-year-old son, Colby John. Welcome to both of you. Colby John uh, immediately sought out uh, President Saunders and asked if his house had been properly decorated for Halloween. <laughs> I cannot tell you uh, the amount of pride I feel as I stand here this morning and uh, be a very small part of this celebration that marks the beginning of the tenure of Florida Atlantic University's sixth president. As this university searched nationally for a new president, many of us had high hopes. Uh, universities always do when searching for a new president. It's a time of excitement and uh, some concern in a gentle way, uh, but also great anticipation and great enthusiasm for the future of the institution uh, based on the search for new leadership. But one of the things that I looked to as Florida Atlantic searched for that new president was how far had the university come? How far had the university come in that close to 50 years? And what sorts of potential leaders would be drawn to Florida Atlantic University for the years to come? Had we come far enough to be able to draw the attention of world-class academics? Had we moved on far enough to garner the attention of marvelous administrators who could ply their trade and move this university to the next level? Would we capture the attention of world-class leadership for an outstanding university who I am still fond of saying has its best days still yet to come? The answer was yes. The answer was a resounding yes. The hard work and the dedication of our outstanding faculty and staff and administration, the vision of our board of trustees, the amazing community support that has surrounded and embraced this institution for 50 years had catapulted the opportunity for this university to go to the next level by garnering that attention of outstanding and committed professionals who found this to be a most exciting, intriguing opportunity, personally and professionally for themselves. And from that great group of candidates bubbled up an individual, as cliche as it might sound, who I am convinced, I believe we are convinced, is absolutely the right person in the right place at exactly the right time. I am convinced that Dr. Saunders I am convinced that Dr. Saunders is the person to lead this wonderful institution into the 21st century boldly and bravely continuing to create new visions, new opportunities and new ideas that will become reality for Florida Atlantic University. So today, we mark the beginning of the tenure of our sixth president at Florida Atlantic University. But quite interestingly, we mark the first 50 years of this institution. Therefore, we stand on the shoulders of giants. All of the people, many in this room, many not in this room, many no longer of this world, who gave their heart and their soul, their passion, their very sinew to bring us to this marvelous day and this marvelous occasion. But as I step away, I remind all of us that education never reaches a plateau of perfection, ever. The day we stop believing that we have arrived at our destination is the day that we begin to move backwards. And so the challenge is very simple, Dr. Saunders and Florida Atlantic University. 
Strive on. Strive on and continue to keep open the doors of access to thousands more students who not only want but desperately need their degree in the world of higher education to be able to find their rightful place in the world of the 21st century. Strive on our faculty and make certain that every student in every classroom and laboratory in your charge is provided not only a good education, but a great educational experience at Florida Atlantic University. Strive on, FAU, and make certain that as one of the 11 jewels in the great crown of the state university system, the fourth largest university system in the nation, that you continue to excel because as you do, all boats in that system continue to rise. And always remember that as great as this day is, ah, the best days for Florida Atlantic University are yet to come. Thank you for the great honor that you've given me today for the chance to be here. Thank you, Chancellor Brogan. And now, Dr. Michael Schwartz, President Emeritus of Cleveland State University, will address our distinguished guests and will bring a special message to Dr. Saunders on this singular day. Good morning. When uh, President Saunders invited me to speak at this wonderful event, I was very flattered and very concerned. Uh, I was flattered because she really might have asked someone with considerably more experience and who had been more successful than I have in academic life, but she didn't. And I was concerned because I really have made a, a habit of never giving senior administrators advice that they are not expecting or for which they have not asked. <laughs> After all, MJ, as the world knows her, she told me one time that the time does come in a woman's life when she just can't be Mary Jane anymore. <laughs> MJ is not exactly a a rookie administrator, you know. Her career has run the gamut from director of research institutes, a, a stint at the National Science Foundation. She became an academic dean, founding academic dean of the College of Science at my institution. And then she became the provost at Cleveland State University. And now she takes on the presidency of a very important American institution. It's true that the presidency is different. I've done it twice. I can attest to the fact that it's very different from any other job in the institution. And some, some wag has said, a president is a person who lives in a big house and begs for a living. <laughs> well, that's, that's not too far off the mark, but it, but it is the president who is charged with the most important tasks of institutional leadership. And among those, the most important and perhaps the most difficult is the formation of what is often called the institutional vision. And some presidents I have known have had a terrible time in discerning the difference between vision and hallucination. <laughs> That's not President Saunders' problem. It's, but she does face the daunting task of applying the arts and sciences of listening carefully to people who are affiliated with this university. She's done this sort of thing before. She's going to do it again. It's an opportunity for her to hear the hopes, the concerns, 
and e even the dreams that people have for their university and for their own careers and their own lives. And it is out of everything that she hears about those things that she's going to have to formulate her vision of the future for this great university. It is her job now to make sense out of what all too often seems to be an uncertain, sometimes threatened, and even threatening future. That doesn't mean that she will have to make some sort of a reaching for the stars statement of what is yet to come. Nothing, nothing sinks an institutional vision faster than grandiosity. Rather, it means knowing that the university can achieve far greater success than it has already achieved. And it can do that if you are thoughtful and careful planners who have a clear sense of goals and are willing to take risks. MJ is a known risk taker. She agreed to work for me. <laughs> that says it all, gang. Now, once she has formulated her vision and feels secure in the fact that she represents all of you in it, her next job will be to forge a consensus around it. She's going to have to say, this is the FAU of the future. I can't take it there alone. I need your help. Will you come along? And for the rest of her time in office, she's going to be forging and reinforcing that consensus. If nothing else, it's the very core of the job. It means that an organization representing interests ranging from the arts to engineering, from business to philosophy, all of you will be asked by her to take the university forward toward a set of broad, overarching, and long-term goals. It will mean clarifying the university's values, asking just what it is that FAU stands for. It also means that she's going to have to ask you to have some courage, too. Sometimes that courage is in the ability to hire people who are better than you are. None of that's easy. It may sound it, but it isn't easy. And it means subordinating some self-interest to the greater good. But great universities are capable of that, and they achieve that. You know, I've watched MJ in action. She knows that great departments are formed one faculty higher at a time. She knows that aggregating great departments into great colleges can take a long time. But she's done that sort of thing. She knows how difficult it is. She knows that it's worthwhile, even critically important, that work she is dedicated to. And she knows that it can't be done alone. That's why she'll ask you to come along and partner with her. I've seen her commitment to excellence play out in the building of departments and colleges on a university-wide basis. She is a risk taker. She's not foolish. She is courageous, but she's not foolhardy. And she understands that professional autonomy and academic freedom are the core values that have to underpin every other effort. So it is my opinion that you are today installing as your president a talented and gifted leader who has demonstrated both the will and the ability to build a great institution. And I know that when she calls, you'll answer her by saying that you'll go along with her and you'll do that because you have come to trust that she will do the right thing. Now she has a secret weapon. That's her husband. <laughs> That's Dr. George Newcomb, who is a distinguished scientist and academician who knows a little bit about universities and leadership. Stand up. It's great. I get to embarrass him. 
I used to introduce my wife as my own secret weapon when I was in the president business. I used to call her the president's president. <laughs> well, George, George Newcomb may or may not be in that role, but he has been supportive. He's been very encouraging of MJ's career all along. And believe me, there will be days. There will be days. <laughs> when she's going to need all of that. She's going to need support and encouragement. And George will be then an even greater and more priceless gift than he already is for her. Well, after, after formulating the vision, forging the consensus around it, there is, of course, the little matter of finding the resources to make all this good stuff happen. And she is going to have to go where their resources are and be persuasive, saying that you and the work you do are more than worth other people's investments. And from what I have seen, it shouldn't be a hard sell, not even in Tallahassee. <laughs> I, I know a little bit about this university. Uh, I was here for six years. But when I first arrived at Florida Atlantic University about 40 years ago, the university was, I don't know, six years old, nine years old, depends on your count. <laughs> they had no freshman or sophomore students. It was a noble experiment that didn't work. <laughs> Lots of experiments don't work. It's okay. The place was struggling for enrollment, and there was some question in my mind about its viability. But I thought it was a personal and professional risk worth taking. I'm very glad that I did it. In 1970, when I came, I was 33 years old. And for the next six years, I studied academic administration with some people here who really understood institution building, who really understand, understood the fundamental purposes of universities, who, who were determined to make FAU into a first-rate academic institution that served well the students and the communities from which they came. They were people like John DeGrove, who was the dean of the College of Social Science. There was such a place in those days. He hired me. Bob Huckshorn was then chairman of the political science department. Jack Suberman was dean of the College of Humanities. Ken Michaels was the vice president for academic affairs. And there were a bunch of others, wonderful people. They were like MJ, they were risk takers. They were disciplined risk takers. And they were great teachers for all of us junior administrators. They were people whose careers were forged in the crucible of risk and opportunity. I, I served here under the first two presidents of the university, Kenneth Williams and Glenwood Creech. I never knew President Williams particularly well. He retired shortly after I arrived. No cause and effect there, I would hope. <laughs> but I did get to know President Creech reasonably well, and he fit the administrative model that was already here. He was a thoughtful, creative, disciplined risk taker, and I was very sorry to learn of his passing last summer. All of those people were, among other things, genuinely nice people. Of course, someone, sometimes one takes risks and fail. Well, it happens, of course, but no one ever looked at a failure here and a person who failed and ask that person to fall on his sword wasn't the style of FAU. The fact of the matter is there was no lack of the nerve of failure, as David Reisman called it, not at this place. People knew how to get up off the floor, dust themselves off, and go back into the fray. There was no failure of nerve either, as I seem to recall. It was a time of great professional courage on this campus. It wasn't that people were not fearful, of course they were fearful. They weren't stupid. But they uniformly saw FAU as more important in the long run than any fears they may have had. 
that recognition that something is more important than one's fears is the very definition of courage. And it took a lot of that to get the university on its feet in the early years. I'm very proud of the fact that I was part of that process, even if in a very small way. The inauguration of Dr. Mary Jane Saunders as president today continues in that grand tradition. This is an institution of intelligently displayed courage. It's an institution populated now, as it was many years ago, by people who believe that the work they do here will one day create a better world, a world, by the way, that they won't get to live in. The very idea of that sort of commitment to an uncertain but better future is what makes all of us in higher education soldier on. But at FAU, it seems to me that that commitment defines the culture. We all know what we do here and elsewhere in higher ed. Our purposes are clear. We are to create new knowledge. We are to verify that knowledge. We are to conserve it. We are to transmit that knowledge to our students and where we can, we are to find new uses for knowledge. It's not very complicated, but the environment in which the work is done has to be one characterized by the notion of autonomy and great academic freedom. Professors and students cannot achieve much in an atmosphere that finds some ideas to be unthinkable. Jacques Barzon said it simply, mean and even filthy things deserve study, he said. But there are people around us who would threaten these notions of academic freedom to inquire, those who would enforce notions of political correctness or demand speech codes and otherwise limit inquiry based on some ideology, and they constitute a very serious threat to inquiry and ultimately to the idea of the university itself. Similarly, any imposition of limitations on thinkable thoughts by authoritarians of whatever the stripe, authoritarians of the left, authoritarians of the right, there's nothing to choose between them. That effort to limit thinkable thoughts hurts our ability to seek the truth of things and those people have to be fended off. There's a growing concern, for example, that tenure is under attack by some who believe that there have to be limits placed on thinkable thoughts. None of this is particularly new. We've had authoritarians with us always. But when they have raised their heads above the foxholes, there have always been professors and academic administrators and journalists and, in fact, politicians those people have been there to hold the ring against them, and they have had great courage to defend academic freedom of inquiry for both professors and students. I, I know about these things firsthand. My first experience with them came right here at FAU. I was honored with the designation Distinguished Teacher of the Year, and I was therefore allowed to address the multitudes on some topic of my choosing. And I said in that speech in the early 1970s some things that were not terribly different and are inconsistent with what I'm saying to you now. The authoritarians were at the gates then, as they are now. And I spoke up about some of that. And after the speech, Professor Doug Gatlin, he was a professor in the Department of Political Science, he was a good old boy from North Carolina, he said to me, that was no trifling speech. I'm from Chicago, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> but I guess it was no trifling speech. But it infuriated a local businessman who was an early and important supporter of FAU. The administrative powers that were here at the time were solidly behind my right to have the ideas that I had and my right to transmit those ideas to my colleagues and to my students. They threw up a ring of defense around me and it was my, my very first, although not the last, my very first experience with courageous administrators who insisted that ideas, the very stuff of academic life, of 
intellectualism in general. Ideas were going to be defended here at this brand new little university on the beach in Boca Raton. They made an important statement about the values of FAU at a time when it was very new and it was very vulnerable. It was a lesson that I've carried with me ever since. It was, I was the beneficiary of their courage and commitment. It formed the very cornerstone of the values I brought to senior administrative positions over a 48-year career in higher education. I was especially pleased, especially pleased, that I was asked by Dr. Saunders to speak to you today. I have come here not only to honor her, I have come here to say thank you. Thank you to FAU for teaching one of the most valuable lessons that I ever had. I never properly thanked those administrators from years ago who stood with me, so I do it now. When MJ accepts the symbols of office here today, it's important for her to know that she follows in the footsteps of some very courageous people. FAU is not just another pretty face on the Atlantic beach. It is a place that is not afraid of stating its values, not afraid of defending the most important of those, academic freedom as the cornerstone of unfettered inquiry. She fits this place remarkably well because she is a person of great principle and integrity. She's a person of great personal courage. She's a very nice person, too. <laughs> I'm proud to call her friend. I'm proud to call her colleague. And you will be, too. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. I think I, you already know the appreciation from the audience for what you've said. Um, we have water up here. Next time, we're going to have to have tissues as well. Um, but I, I do hope that you are able to return this spring for our dinner for the Distinguished Teachers of the Year. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Now I present a very special musical interlude by the FAU Wind Ensemble and FAU Chamber Singers who will perform an original score commissioned by FAU especially for the occasion of Dr. Saunders' inauguration. The performance today is a world premiere and was created by Dr. Stuart Glazer, Professor of Music in the Dorothy F. Schmidt College of Arts and Letters. Dr. Glazer was inspired by two Emily Dickinson poems. The pieces are titled A Little Road Not Made for Man and angels in the early morning.
Thank you. That was a beautiful performance. I think Dr. Flitus was trying to recognize Dr. Glazer in the back, the composer. <laughs> and now we have come to the focal point of today's ceremony, the installation of Dr. Mary Jane Saunders as the sixth president of Florida Atlantic University. The installation will be conducted by Trustee Nancy Blosser, Chair of the Florida Atlantic University Board of Trustees. Trustee Blosser. <clears throat> Good, morning. Good morning. It's a great privilege for me to be here with you today to confer Florida Atlantic University's highest office upon Dr. Mary Jane Saunders. When FAU's Board of Trustees set out to select the university's sixth president, we had no doubt that a talented, creative, and committed leader was on the horizon. And we are confident that the board made an excellent choice in unanimously selecting Mary Jane Saunders. As Dr. Saunders assumes As Dr. Saunders assumes the high responsibility of taking this great university into the future, we'll look to her to provide visionary, innovative leadership of the academic enterprise and true engagement with all of the university's constituencies, including students, alumni, faculty, and staff, and our friends in the greater community. In the few months that she's been here, she's already shown herself to be more than able to fulfill all of those expectations. At this critical moment in its history, 
FAU needs a leader who is fully prepared to engage all of these challenges with energy and enthusiasm. Anyone who has met Dr. Saunders or heard her speak will have no doubt that she is that leader. Dr. Saunders brings a complete set of skills that the board looked for and that the university community required in this key position. She is an award-winning cell biology researcher, educator, and academic leader who is known nationally for her commitment to public education. We've all entrusted her with the leadership of an institution that is rapidly rising in prominence and today enrolls 28,000 students on seven campuses and sites, offering more than 170 degree programs from bachelor's to the PhD level. Dr. Saunders oversees an academic enterprise that employs nearly 4,500 faculty and staff, and she manages an annual operating budget of more than $550 million. Additionally, the university is in the process of launching an independent medical education program that will offer both the MD degree and a dual MD PhD degree in partnership with the Scripps Research Institute's Kellogg School of Science and Technology, whose graduate programs are consistently ranked among the top in the nation. Prior to her arrival at FAU, Dr. Saunders was Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at Cleveland State University, where she was also the Founding Dean of the College of Science, Director of Biomedical and Health Institute, and a Professor in the Department of Biological, Geological, and Environmental Sciences. At FAU, she is a Professor in the Charles E. Schmidt College of Science, as well as serving as President. In the nearly five months that she's been at the helm, she's engaged in a listening tour, meeting with faculty, students, community members, staff, and donors to assess their thoughts about FAU and to solicit their ideas and suggestions for FAU's future. She's committed to student success, working with faculty and staff to pursue national distinction for our academic and research programs and engaging the community as we take FAU to the next level of excellence. Recognizing the financial challenges our students face in pursuing their educational goals, President Saunders, her husband, Dr. George Newcomb, and members of the FAU Foundation Board of Directors established a matching gift fund called the President's Scholarship Challenge. This campaign was, la was launched with a personal pledge of $50,000 from President Saunders. It's apparent that true to her inaugural theme, Dr. Mary Jane Saunders will be making waves at Florida Atlantic University's sixth president. I now ask Dr. Mary Jane Saunders to step forward. I also invite her husband, Dr. George Newcomb, to join her at the front of the podium. Dr. Mary Jane Saunders, you have been duly selected to serve as president of Florida Atlantic University. It's my great pleasure as chairman of the Board of Trustees to install you in that office with all of its requisite rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Today you will receive the President's medallion as a symbol of your new office. You will wear the medallion at honors convocations, commencements, and other important ceremonial occasions. Its weight is a reminder of the heavy responsibilities that must be willingly carried by all who occupy the position of president. And the design on its face, a reproduction of the university seal, represents the community you serve. By accepting the president's medallion, you accept the charge to serve with diligence, dedication, energy, vision, and integrity as you carry out the duties of President of Florida Atlantic University.
Good morning. And thank you for being here with me today on what is surely one of the most important days of my life as I embrace the high responsibility and great privilege of leading Florida Atlantic University as its sixth president. I'd like to begin by thanking Trustee Blosser not only for that gracious introduction, but also for her dedicated leadership of the Board of Trustees over the past two years. FAU is so fortunate to be served by a board of community leaders who are steadfast in their commitment to this institution and who devote untold hours of their very valuable time to guiding the university's development. Their influence on this university and our entire region will be felt for many years and we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. Please join me in expressing sincere thanks to the Florida Atlantic University Board of Trustees. I'd also like to thank everyone who served on the inauguration committee, all the sponsors of our inaugural activities, and the students, faculty, and staff who planned them and participated in them. Special thanks to Trustee Sherry Plymail and Dr. Marianne Gosser, who as chair and co-chair of the inauguration committee, devoted hundreds of hours to putting all aspects of this week of celebration in place. Trustee Plymail oversaw the work of the many subcommittees, and Dr. Gosser coordinated the wonderful musical and artistic contributions of our talented faculty. Mary Mertz offered great administrative support to the committee. This week is the culmination of the dedication and hard work of many members of the FAU family, and I'd like to take this opportunity to offer them heartfelt thanks. I'm so pleased that the hallmark of this inaugural celebration is inclusivity. Events involving students, faculty, staff, and friends of the university have taken place on all campuses, ranging from the traditional fun-filled activities of homecoming to four symposia examining important issues of our time to last Sunday's Waves of Blue concert that generated support for the President's Scholarship Challenge Fund. Thanks to everyone who participated in these events, which taken together have made this week a celebration of FAU that will be remembered for a long time to come. I'd also like to thank the distinguished platform guests and speakers who have brought their greetings here today. Some guests who are very special to me have come here to join us this morning and I'd like to introduce them to you. My husband, George, my sisters, Elaine, Lisa, and Sally, my brother-in-law, Jim, my stepdaughter and son-in-law, Melanie and Will, and my first cousins, Robin and Meg. George and I will celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary next summer, and we have had a wonderful journey together. Will you all please stand for a moment I'm so glad you're able to come, and it's wonderful to introduce you to my FAU family. I'd like to thank Dr. Michael Schwartz and his wife, Dr. Joanne Schwartz. More than anyone else, Mike Schwartz prepared me to see myself in the role of a university president and helped me through the stages of professional growth that were needed to bring me to this day. He has been a friend, kindred spirit, and mentor to me in many years, and I will always be deeply grateful to him for the ways in which he's touched my life. The mentoring relationship is powerful, and it's one that will be encouraged and nurtured at all levels of this university throughout my presidency. You should know I ask, what would Mike do when I'm faced with a tough decision? And so far, it has served me very well. We come together this morning to take part in a ceremony that holds more significance 
than simply welcoming a new president on board. This is an opportunity for us to revisit the mission of Florida Atlantic University, to reaffirm the role that we as an academic community play in the life of the greater community, and to envision a future that holds unlimited potential for FAU. Let's begin by asking why we're here. The answer is Zen-like in its simplicity. We are here to serve students. Everything that you and I do, whether as a faculty member, an administrator, an athletics coach, or a member of the support staff, has serving students as its core objective. We serve them best when we help them succeed academically, which in turn positions them to succeed in life. Since opening its doors in the fall of 1964, FAU has awarded degrees to more than 100,000 men and women, and we take great pride in all of them. Some of them have gone on to achieve great things in their work, bringing special honor to the alma mater. The list of alumni in this category is far too long for me to recount by name this morning, but let me say that included in their number are public officials ranging from City Hall to the United States Congress, nationally and internationally known entrepreneurs, truly outstanding members of all the professions, acclaimed artists, acclaimed scientists, several university presidents, a chancellor, an ambassador, and an American astronaut who has twice carried FAU flags into space. Clearly, this university has been doing its job and doing it well for nearly half a century. And I'd like to acknowledge the leadership contributions of the five presidents who have brought us to this day. President Kenneth Williams, FAU's founding father, took the university from concept to reality and built the strong foundation that we stand on today. President Glenwood Creech's 10-year term of office saw dramatic growth of the donor base as he won many friends of wealth and influence for the university and made FAU the state leader in the establishment of million-dollar eminent scholar chairs. President Helen Popovich, the first woman president in the history of Florida State's university system, expanded the student body to include freshmen and sophomores, and focused on increasing the racial and ethnic diversity of students, faculty, and staff. President Anthony Catanes presided over a period of explosive growth during which the size of the student body more than doubled Hundreds of new tenure-track faculty came on board. Dozens of new degree programs were added. The number of campuses increased from three to seven. The FAU Foundation's first capital campaign overshot its goal by nearly $100 million. And half a billion dollars in construction projects were carried out university-wide. Student life was greatly enriched during his 12 years in office most notably by the addition of a football team to our intercollegiate athletics program. President Frank Brogan, a distinguished alumnus of FAU, left the position of Florida Lieutenant Governor to return to his alma mater as its fifth president. During his six years at the helm, the university grew to a whole new level of maturity as admission standards were raised, Critically important partnerships were formed with the Scripps Research Institute, the Torrey Pines Institute for Molecular Studies, and the Max Planck Society. The Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute joined the FAU fold. Hundreds of millions of dollars in construction projects moved forward. And our young football team, under the leadership of legendary coach Howard Schnellenberger, made history by winning two college bowl games back to back. That brings us to today, to this moment in the history of an institution that was created by the legislature in 1961 as Florida's fifth public university, thus establishing the first state-funded center of higher education, research, and community service in Southeast Florida. In August of 2011, we'll begin a year-long observance of the university's 50th year, its golden anniversary. 
from its moment of creation to the present day, the concept of stewardship of place has resided at the very heart of what this university is all about, and I'd like to take a few moments to discuss that, what that means to all of us. While we take pride in the fact that FAU has expanded its reach to attract students from many parts of our country, and indeed from around the world, we must never lose sight of the fact that serving local students and communities is an essential part of our core mission. Someone once said that all politics are local, and I'd like to invoke that thought in conjunction with how we think of ourselves as a university community. Certainly much of what we do here knows no boundaries. Scientific discoveries are of importance to people all over the world, as are great artistic creations and advances in the many disciplines taught in our classrooms, lecture halls, and laboratories. But it's what we do on the local level that integrates us into the very lives of the communities we serve and makes this university a force for good in the most immediate sense. I was very glad when I arrived at FAU to discover that we already have many units and individuals who are committed to community outreach, volunteerism, and service learning, and who are doing an excellent job of giving real substance to that facet of the university's mission. I intend to make that a strong emphasis on community engagement a hallmark of my presidency, and I call upon each of you to do whatever you can to make FAU a truly stellar citizen of its very large service area. Our campuses are literally treasure troves of expertise that can bring, 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 bring benefits of many kinds to the people who live in our area, and it's up to us to let them know that we're more than willing to share our time, our talents, and knowledge with them. I know that many of you are engaged in these activities, and I thank you for all you're doing for putting a human face on Florida Atlantic University. We must never forget that FAU was created to be an agent of positive change right here in our own corner of the world. Let's take a fresh look at what's going on in the six counties in FAU service area. Broward, Palm Beach, Martin, St. Lucie, Indian River, and Okeechobee. Their aggregate population stands at 3.6 million people. And during the coming decade, more than 330,000 graduates are expected to be produced by the high schools in those counties and a fair number of them will come knocking on FAU's doors in pursuit of college degrees. Serving the students in this pipeline will continue to require a coordinated team effort with the school districts and our longtime partners in higher education, Broward College, Palm Beach State College, and Indian River State College. The articulation agreements that FAU has had for decades with these three outstanding partner institutions have delivered life-changing educational opportunities to thousands upon thousands of students, and FAU remains fully committed to maintaining these important relationships, and we thank each of our valued college partners for all they're doing to broaden access to higher education in South Florida. Whether they enroll at FAU as freshmen or come to us as transfer students, many of our students are the first members of their families to attend college. This is a deeply meaningful development in the social and economic evolution of any family, and I often find myself thinking how privileged we are as an academic community to be able to introduce so many young people to the joys and challenges of university life. This came in sharp focus for me in August when I addressed the class of 2014 during freshman convocation. There are moments in life when change becomes a palpable presence, and freshman convocation is a highly memorable occasion for that reason. Each member of every incoming class, especially those who are first in their families to go to college, 
are setting out on a journey to a whole new place in life. While their ultimate destinations may vary, the process always involves profound personal growth and conscious development of the ability to think critically. In my remarks to those 2,700 young newcomers to our community, I advise them to be open to ideas that might differ from their own, to, div to value diversity of thought and philosophy, and to actively work on expanding their view of themselves and their world. When we abandon our preconceived notions of who we are and where our personal boundaries lie, exciting new horizons come into view. I heard from many of our faculty that that message also resonated with them as a definition of a liberal arts education today and a core value of this institution. The process of breaking old molds and creating new ones for ourselves can feel quite alien at first, but the rewards can be enormous. This inauguration is themed Making Waves, and that is an apt descriptor for my life. I've always embraced change as a growth opportunity, and I'd like to share some of my own story with you here today. I'm the oldest girl in a family of six children, and that in of itself may have gone a long way toward preparing me to be a university president. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my sisters believe that to be true. My father was the purchasing agent for a small business dealing in bicycle parts, and my mother was a public school teacher, initially in the first grade and later for students with intellectual disabilities. My younger brother was born mentally and physically disabled, which motivated my mother to learn teaching strategies that would help him and other kids who are facing that kind of challenge. Both of my parents always showed tremendous confidence in all of their children, and they encouraged us to follow our dreams. I know they would have loved to have seen this day. From the beginning of my school years, I loved both literature and science. I wanted to read every book in the public library at the end of our street in Worcester, Massachusetts. However, I realized in college that reading was not a career and that the creativity and challenge of science appealed to my inquisitive nature. Science provided me a way of examining the infinite variety of things that exist in the natural world, of understanding them, of manipulating them, and discovering previously unknown properties, and then passing that information along to future generations. I changed my major from English to biology, and then took two graduate degrees in botany. I will always consider myself a scientist, and I'm privileged to hold the rank a professor in the Charles E. Schmidt College of Science here at FAU. I've taught and conducted federally funded research. My writing skills certainly helped there. And then an opportunity arose for me to step into a leadership role. I became the director of the University of South, University of South Florida's Institute of Biomolecular Science an interdisciplinary research institute that supported and coordinated work taking place in four colleges, seven institutes, and the USF Medical School, while still teaching and doing research. I found that I could make a major impact on scientific research by supporting graduate education, writing and then leading program grant awards, and mentoring young faculty. That pattern was replicated at the National Science Foundation, as founding dean of a college of science, and then as provost at Cleveland State University. I was very fortunate to be part of the academy when opportunities for women, especially those in the sciences, opened up. This administrative service has culminated in the unparalleled opportunity and huge privilege of serving as the president of this vibrant young university. The words only in America come to mind at this point in my story. And indeed, our nation is known around the world for opening the door of opportunity to people with the will to walk through it. My own experience is never far from my mind when I meet incoming students who are standing on the cusp of their own only in America experiences. And isn't it wonderful that you and I have important roles to play in putting them on the road to success. 
In recent years, we have put many programs in place to help students stay on track and move steadily toward graduation. Just this month, that effort got major reinforcement when our Office of Undergraduate Studies received a $1.6 million grant from Title III from Strengthening Institutions. This provides funds to shore up the safety net under students who are at risk of dropping out during their second to third years of study. We're using this grant to create a program called ACCESS, which stands for Academic and Career Enhancement for Second Year Students. The program will offer stepped up advising for students along with tutoring and career counseling. We want every student who enrolls at FAU to achieve the dream of achieving a college degree and we're doing everything we can to give them the tools to do so. This may not be apparent on its face, but the construction on this campus of a 30,000 seat stadium, which got underway just two weeks ago, is an important element of our strategy to retain students through graduation. Studies have repeatedly shown that students who become immersed in campus life through participation in social activities and athletic events have an increased likelihood of persevering until they achieve their degree. We are human beings who are social creatures and most of us crave interaction with other people. Shared experiences are the glue that binds us together and nothing has the ability to unite a university community like a stadium where everyone comes together as one to cheer for the home team. After years of waiting, planning, and hoping, we're on the verge of giving FAU students something to really cheer about, a stadium of their own. The 28,000 students who are studying for degrees at FAU today will pursue their lives and careers in a world much different from the ones their parents and grandparents knew as young adults. Technology has made it easy to communicate at warp speed while doing little to increase understanding between people. Political and economic divisions are rendering the fabric of many societies, and the recent onslaught of natural disasters have added a profoundly tragic dimension to the suffering of people all over the world. A new study from Harvard University indicates that only 6.7% of the world's 6.8 billion people hold college degrees. While that figure has increased by 1% over the last 10 years, the educated elite is still razor thin, and it falls to us to provide the kind of leadership in government, business, religious institutions, and nonprofit organizations that will pave the way to peace rather than heightened discord. Our job is to do everything within our power to prepare the next generation of leaders to succeed in this critically important mission. To meet this objective, we must be willing to change and grow as an institution. Charles Darwin said, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Stasis means death for organizations as well as organisms. And that which doesn't change will die or become irrelevant. Florida Atlantic University is not about to travel down either of those dead end roads. Our strategic plan, which will soon undergo review, is all about identifying and embracing the changes that will make FAU even more useful to our students and the greater community than it is today and to meet emerging needs. While it's not clear what role exclusively online for-profit universities will play in the future of higher education in America, we've seen ample evidence that many students at FAU want an e-learning option and will take advantage of it when it is offered. Interest in online teaching is increasing among faculty, along with concerns about ensuring the quality of such classes 
developing consistent pedagogical processes, and providing adequate training and software to support the ongoing development of this rapidly evolving educational venture. To address all of these on an institutional level, one of the first things I did upon arriving at FAU last summer was to appoint an e-learning task force. They carried out a thorough examination of the issue and in September submitted a report containing a number of recommendations that are built around the proposed establishment of a center for e-learning at FAU. This center will ov oversee all aspects of the e-learning enterprise from working with individual faculty members on course design to coordinating the whole universe of e-learning resources for faculty and students. I'd like to thank all the members of that task force for their comprehensive report and thoughtful recommendations. I decided to call this address Making Waves, Celebrating and Cultivating Discovery, Diversity, and Distinction because I really like the image of Making Waves and it fits FAU in so many ways, from our location a mile or two away from one of the most famous beaches in the world, to the ripple effect that our work has on the greater community. The thing that makes universities unique among society's institutions is that they are the places where a conscious effort to acquire new, new knowledge takes place every day. From the Middle Ages to the present day, scholars have been hard at work advancing our understanding of how the world works, discovering and explaining basic scientific principles, developing ingenious ways of harnessing that knowledge to improve life on Earth, and interpreting the human experience through inspired writing, art, and music. Ultimately, universities have the ability to transcend time and place, to reach far into the future, to touch and shape the lives of generations yet unborn. That amazing dynamic continues to this day, and we're all part of it. We are making waves that will lap up on shores we may never see, and I find that enormously inspiring. One of the primary jobs of the modern American university is to introduce students to the great diversity of people and cultures on our planet and help them understand, appreciate, and celebrate the ways in which we are differ and the ways in which we're all the same. Maya Angelou has written a very moving poem called The Human Family, expressing that thought as only she can, and I'd like to share it with you now. I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some of us are serious, some thrive on comedy. Some declare their lives are lived as true profundity, and others claim they really live the real reality. The variety of our skin tones can confuse, bemuse, delight. Brown and pink and beige and purple, tan and blue and white. I've sailed upon the seven seas and stopped in every land. I've seen the wonders of the world and not one common man. I know 10,000 women called Jane and Mary Jane, but I've not seen any two who really were the same. Mirror twins are different, although their features jibe, and lovers think quite different thoughts while lying side by side. We love and lose in China, we weep on England's moors, we laugh and moan in Guana and thrive on Spanish shores. We seek success in Finland, are born and die in Maine, in minor ways we're differ, in major we're all the same. I note the obvious differences between each type and sort, but we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. That really says it all, doesn't it? Our challenge as educators is to help students discover this great truth for themselves and studying abroad is a wonderful way to do that. 
Here at FAU, we have always had a great office of international programs. And last year, FAU students went to countries that included Germany, Spain, Brazil, Ecuador, England, Sweden, South Korea, Portugal, Japan, Ireland, France, and Finland. Study abroad is a uniquely enriching experience, and I intend to make it a focal point of my presidency. We are in the business of educating, educating citizens of the world, and we must never forget that. Another way in which this university is generating waves that will touch the future is in its strong commitment to sustainability. Next week, I'll have the pleasure of joining Dean Stevens in cutting the ribbon of our new headquarter facility for our College of Engineering and Computer Science. We can all take great pride in the fact that this is the first university academic building in Florida that's been designated to reach the highest lead stand in the platinum credential. So much has been said about our university's rapid development as a center of research and about the enormous promise inherent with our partnerships with Scripps, Torrey Pines, and Max Planck. I don't feel to say more on that today except to say that one of the core themes of my presidency will be the continued growth of our research enterprise. As a scientist, I get, take great pride in leading an institution that is a fully engaged, productive participant in the most advanced discoveries of our time and whose researchers are making truly important contributions to the future health and well-being of the people we share this planet with and the planet itself. Discovery and creativity of all kinds will be encouraged, valued, and rewarded at Florida Atlantic University. One especially exciting example of the degree to which FAU is maturing as a center of discovery is the recent designation of this university as the home of the Southeast National Marine Renewable Energy Center. This national center is conducting research on ways to tap the power of the oceans as a source of clean, affordable energy. FAU's leadership in diversity has become a familiar story as year after year we've had the most racially, ethnically, and culturally diverse student body in our state university system. Let us not forget we also boast the country's most diverse generational university community with more than 19,000 intellectually vibrant, experience-rich, lifelong learners in the mix. They add a dimension to the life of our university that cannot be measured by conventional means. They infuse our community with an energy that's all its own, and they inspire us to keep on learning, keep on growing, and keep looking ahead for all of our lives. Every kind of human diversity in the FAU family will be appreciated and celebrated throughout my presidency. I'd like to close by saying thanks to all of you, the heart and soul of FAU. Thanks to our wonderful faculty across the disciplines who are so generous in sharing their knowledge and time with students and so skilled in advancing our mission. Thanks to our hardworking and often unsung staff who provide the kind of wall-to-wall -wall support that allows our large and complex academic enterprise to open for business every day. Thanks to our alumni and donors who understand what FAU is all about and do so much to help us keep on moving to higher ground. Thanks to our partners in the public and private sectors who walk beside us as trusted companions on our journey into the future. And last, but certainly not least, thanks to our students who come to us seeking to improve their lives through knowledge and who enrich the life of our university in an infinite variety of ways. I'm proud to be one of you. I'm proud to tell your story. And I'm very, very proud to be your president.
Thank you, President Saunders. Thank you for your inspiring words and your vision for Florida Atlantic University. We welcome you as our president and look forward to working with you as this university moves into a future filled with high achievement in the service of the people of Florida, the nation, and the world. And now, would you all please rise for the singing of the alma mater, led by the FAU Wind Ensemble and the FAU Chamber Singers. You'll find the words printed in your program. Thank <laughs> you. 